Well, our guest today has been such an inspiration to me as personally as a healer and content creator. Just her embodiment of feminine leadership is really something remarkable. And so I just had to bring her on the show because I wanted to give you all an opportunity to just hear her story and get to know this woman and just experience the magnetic energy that she brings into the space. So she is a best-selling author and author an advocate, an entrepreneur, a healer, and former strong Black woman. She provides safe and brave spaces where individuals can be their authentic selves so that they can begin a holistic and spiritual healing process. Trust me when I say that she is no fluff and will dive deep into your physical, mental, spiritual, and sexual health to facilitate your healing journey. She sees clients both internationally via the distance healing method and also locally in her office in Baltimore, Maryland. So some call her a muse, others call her a healer, others call her a wise woman who knows exactly what you need without you even saying a word. So I hope you are as excited as I am to meet our guest today. And so with no further ado, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to, Co to Contessa Louise Cooper. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You know, every time someone reads that, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're talking about me, you know, because it's amazing because sometimes you just don't see yourself as all of those things. You know, I'm just doing what I feel like I'm called to do in my heart. And however that shows up in people's lives that's what I want to be. So if I'm a healer to you, let me be a healer. If I'm a muse to you, let me be a muse. If I'm an inspiration, then allow me to inspire you to be the best version of you that you can possibly be. So thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. And thank you, Contessa. So first, for those who haven't met you, I know I shared a little bit in your bio about what you do, but can you just tell us a little bit about the work you do in the world and what you're currently working on? Oh my gosh, what don't I do? That's probably <laughs> your question. And so again, like you said, you know, I am a healer. You know, I do. I am a practitioner. I am the president of the Holistic Chamber of Commerce in New Jersey. So I just recently moved from Baltimore to New Jersey. Um, and so I have a whole entire audience there of business owners who are trying to figure out this whole business thing. So I'm glad that I'm able to be a mentor for them in that area. I do coach and I'm a mentor one-on-one -on -one and do group coaching for anyone that's in the holistic, spiritual, or you know, business, personal life, whatever it is that you need. Because I feel like if one area of your life is kind of not what you want it, then every area of your life, it shows up there. So it doesn't matter what you come to me for, you're going to see an increase of happiness, of prosperity in all areas of your life. Um, I'm also doing this amazing virtual stomach. So I create platforms. And so my magazine, Maud and Odd Health, creates platforms. So not only can you write, but you can also speak on my platform as well. So I'm super excited about that. You mentioned me being an advocate. I have a son, grown, grown son with autism. And so I've been doing autism for almost 30 years. I'm actually opening up a clinic here really soon where we do non-compliance based healing, um, wow. which is a huge, um, you don't hear about that a lot. Um, I feel like I'm doing some groundbreaking work in this area. Um, doing a holistic based clinic for individuals on the autism spectrum. So I'm super, super, super excited about that, you know, and I'm just an all around fun person. So those are kind of the <laughs> things I'm doing. So thank you again for allowing me to share a little piece of me with your audience. Absolutely. That is so exciting. Um, so Contessa, you and I met actually in a podcasting group, and that's how I found out about the summit and about the work you're doing. Um, it seems like as time goes on, it's like an onion unfolding. There's all these layers, and I learn more and more about just your inspiration, your passion, and I love this idea of opening this clinic. I think that's going to help a lot of people. So. Yeah. 
can you talk a little bit about where your passion comes from for healing? Is it always something that has been with you since childhood or just how did you get started um, on your own path as a healer? You know, I honestly think that it's something that has been there since birth. Um, and it started with cooking in the kitchen. And <laughs> to me, a growing up with in a household that was, you know, kind of chaotic food was the one area where we all came together. There were smiles at every single holiday. So I learned how to cook as an early age in order to kind of spread love within my family and to spread love other pe to other people. Um, then when I was pregnant, had my son who had all kinds of health issues, that's when I really dug deep into holistic um, on alternative ways because I didn't, the medications were just, I don't have anything against medication. Take medication if you need it. But mm -hmm. medication plus herbs, medication plus crystals, medication plus color therapy, medication plus the food that you eat. Let's add some holistic things. And so we did all the things. We did diet, we did color therapy, we did compliance based therapy. We did all those things. And the more that I learned, the more I realized I didn't learn. So I kept learning and learning and learning. And then I realized I had all this information. And so then I wanted to teach the things that I knew to other people and then become a resource for those who don't know, who don't even know where to begin, where to start, because there's so much information out there. So I'm like, hey, if you don't know where to go, if you don't know what to do, you can come to me and together we can kind of, you know, find a path that's right for you. So that's kind of where I got started and, you know, forever learning, forever growing, forever sharing, as you know, um, especially with you and your practice, you know, you know, I Reiki is such a wonderful, wonderful uh, practice, you know, yes. learning about your food and growing your own food and growing your own herbs and all the wonderful things that you can do with that. And just something as simple, a lot of us don't know that we have a little bit of a healer inside of us, just mm -hmm. actively listening and being there and be able to hold space for those who are hurting. That's so important right now. All of us have someone who right now needs you to be a listening ear. And so I always say, you don't have to go out there and heal the world. Just heal your backyard. If we all can just heal our backyard, what a wonderful world this would be. That is so profound. I had to write that down. Heal your backyard. You said so much there, and I want to um, just unpack that a little bit. Wow, like your journey of being able to, you know, be a mother and then being confronted with autism, um, that's something that is not talked about a lot in terms of holistic, a holistic approach to that. And um, just hearing about how that changed you and how you're now able to not only, you know, have helped your son all these years, but to also help other people and develop your path as a healer. Can you talk a little bit about how that came together? Like, what are some of the, the things you did when you were first getting started? Um, to start teaching other people? Did you start with blogging or was it more speaking? How did you kind of get started doing that? And so, like I said, my son is almost 30 years old. So we got to think way back 30 years ago. Not a lot of internet, not a lot of... <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay. Um, when you were newly diagnosed or your child was newly diagnosed, they handed you a pamphlet that basically said, Good luck. I remember sitting in the office of my pediatrician holding my son. Um, and they basically told me to institutionalize my son, to go ahead and basically throw him away. And I was young enough to have another child because they, there was no help for him. It was better for me to give him up than to spend the time and the resources to take care of him. And I was like, absolutely not. You know, I'm going to do the very best that I can to take care of him. And there wasn't a lot of information out there at all. You were basically on your own. And so you had to rely on your intuition. And that's where I think that 
that part of me really started to develop because I didn't have anyone else to go to. There wasn't a, a Facebook group. There wasn't a meetup. There wasn't the internet to help me or anyone there that I could bounce ideas off to. I was one of the, you know, five moms at school who had a child with autism and none of us knew what we were doing. And so when someone mentioned a diet, you had to really check yourself to see if that's something that you should be doing and then how to navigate that, you know, which wasn't an easy task because if you have a child that only eats chicken nuggets mm. <laughs> and then you're like, oh yeah, so we're going to go gluten free. And now you have to make chicken nuggets from scratch with you trying to go to work, with the therapies, with everything that's going on. That's no easy task. And so you had to think, what would be the very best thing that I can do right now for my child? And be comfortable sitting in that regardless of what everyone else is saying. And so I want to make note of that. Like, Whatever you decide to do for yourself holistically, sit in that and know that you are doing the very best you can because everybody's going to be like, oh, you should do this and you should do that and be like, no, this is what I'm doing and I am perfectly okay with that. So we did. We tried gluten-free. He wasn't down with that. He wasn't down with that at all. He was like, no, we are not doing that. I want my chicken nuggets. I want this and that. And the thing that people don't understand about when you're changing someone's diet, that this is a long-term plan. You can't do it for 30 days. Be like, oh, I didn't notice a change and then stop doing it. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, I'm going to try this for six months and see if we make a change. Yeah, I'm using this new herb. Let me try this for six months months without introducing something new. So these are long-term, quote unquote, experiments that you are doing with someone who may or may not be down with what it is that you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, and so at, we did everything under the sun to eventually I stopped doing a bunch of stuff and I start just letting him be. And once I was able to just be happy with the way he was, then I could notice things that would set him off, things that would agitate him. Why are we having these behaviors? Once I realized why we were having behaviors, then I was a able to at least help him with the behavior or eliminate the behavior at all. One of my favorite jokes is, it's so important for them to learn how to tie their shoe. And so the therapist would spend hours and hours and hours trying to make my son tie his shoe. He was like, I could care less about this shoe. I'm not tying it. And so we came up with a really easy answer. We don't use shoelaces. Now the problem is, <laughs> and we can start focusing on other things like teaching him to cook and to clean and to be more independent and have conversations with other people. Those are the things that really matter. It didn't matter if he could tie his shoe. And so those are types of things that we focus on what really matters in this situation. If your child doesn't like it when you turn on the microwave, get rid of the microwave. It's not good for you anyway. Just get rid of your microwave and then the problem is solved. You don't have to worry about what should I do during this meltdown. Just avoid the meltdown. And you sometimes know, that's simple. Yeah, and I think that that's definitely something we can apply, honestly, to everybody. You know, this this need to fix and control and have things the way we expect. But like you said, uh, just being able to say, wait a minute, let me actually see where he's at. And then having that ability to observe, that is so powerful. And, I mean, he's so blessed to have to have you as a mom because I just love hearing you you share all of this because there's so many parents I know actually a lot of people in my own network um, that have dealt with children that have autism and so I look forward to being able to share this I'm not sure how much of this stuff they already know but the more the merrier and I think that everyone listening can definitely benefit um, so I wanted to ask you about 
how did you keep yourself centered and grounded? Because I know that that there were, I'm sure, a lot of times where you probably felt frustrated, like, what do I do? I've tried everything, maybe sometimes felt sad. So can you talk a little bit about how you were able to kind of keep yourself grounded and what that was like going through that experience for you? It was. There were days, and, you know, I, I wrote a book about it, um, and there were days where I just cried endlessly um, because my son was going through a really tough time and it was making me go through a really tough time dealing with the behaviors that he was going through and there was no cure. The cure was he will eventually stop. Regar you know, it could be a week, it could be four weeks, it could be years, you know, that I was gonna have to deal with this particular behavior. And so every single morning I just cried and cried and cried because I was frustrated. Um, how do you get through those moments? My self-talk is amazing. Like I am my own best friend. Nobody loves me more than I love me. And it was something I had to learn because I didn't have, a lot of times I didn't have a spouse. I was a single mom. I was doing this by myself. I have a great support system, but at three o'clock in the morning, there's not a lot of people you can call. You know, and then mm -hmm. you don't want to feel like you're a burden. So you have to depend on you. And so, girl, you got this. You are amazing. You are the best mom for him. He is so lucky to have you. You know exactly what it is that you have to do. Yeah, girl, this is rough now, but wait five minutes. You're going to be laughing and, and, and having a great time. Like, like I'm my own cheerleader on my shoulder. And that's how I got through those things. I also mentioned that I had a great support system. I did. Me and the other moms, um, we would trade off childcare. You know, we would find time for girls' night. We created safe spaces where we could say, you know what, today I wanted to punch my kid. Not that we would. <laughs> Uh, today, that's what I felt like. That's how what I wanted to do today, you know, when I was out there and my son cursed me out in front of everybody because he has Tourette's too. You know, you have to have spaces where you can vent because that stuff will bottle up. And you see what happens when you let that stuff bottle and fester. You know, terrible things can happen to you, to your family, health issues, all kinds of things. And so you don't want to keep those things bottled up. So you need to be your own cheerleader. And, and if you don't know how, there's a whole bunch of affirmations. You know, I, I wrote an article on my, on my magazine with 23 affirmations, you know, that you can just say over and over again, put it where you can, put it on your phone, say it, and it needs to become a habit. So as soon as that bad thought comes, you replace it immediately with something good, immediately. I joke around and you know the song Tyrone, you had a call. <laughs> I, call I call that that nasty voice, that nagging voice Tyrone. And so when Tyrone <laughs> shows up, I tell Tyrone to shut up. <laughs> way. You know, I, I add humor to a lot of things. I deal with a lot of stuff through humor because I honestly believe that laughter is such great medicine. I've gone through some really, really bad days and I've gotten through it because of laughter through my friends, through TV, through shows, through music, whatever. Find your joy because you're going to need it. Life is tough. But whether you have someone with autism or not, life is tough and you need to find your joy no matter where you can just find it. Yes, and I can definitely attest to the humor. So those are great tips. Be your own cheerleader. That's huge. Um, I love how you said nobody loves me more than I love myself. That That's so powerful. Um, having that support system, I think that's an area where a lot of people um, are lacking. Even if you are your own cheerleader, just having that support system to back you up. I'm so glad that you shared that. And uh, the humor, I can't tell you how many times I have died laughing, <laughs> looking at your post every day. You are like the funniest person I know. So um, can you talk a little bit about your book? Um, what's the name of your book? What's it about? And when did you actually publish that book? So I published, it's called Mad at the World, How to Find Peace 
when you're a special needs parent. And that book is available on Amazon. Um, you can look up Contessa Louise Cooper. I'm the only one. Um, it, sh it should pop right up. But I wrote that book in three days. Um, <laughs> I was in a group um, of writers and the owner of the group was going to publish stories for free. And she wanted to pick a story. And so everybody raised their hand, pick me, pick me. And, and I said, pick me. And she picked me and I didn't have a book. And so she was like, I need the book by this weekend. And I was like, I bet. And so I literally sat down for three days straight and wrote the book straight from my heart. Um, I wrote a book on forgiveness, but I didn't intend on writing a book about forgiveness. During this journey, I had to learn to let stuff go. And so the first book is basically forgiving myself for not knowing, for making bad decisions, for messing up sometimes, for not being there 100% because of the stuff that I was going through in order to try to be the best mother I could be for my son. I had to forgive my friends and my family because they didn't know. Sometimes they didn't know what to say. They didn't know how to act. Um, and so I had to forgive them for those moments. I had to forgive all of the therapists and all the professionals that I dealt with because they're overworked and they probably know less than I do about autism and definitely less than I do about my family dynamic and definitely less about my child. And so I had to forgive them when they steered me the wrong way or gave me really terrible advice because, you know, they call it practicing medicine. So yeah. they did a lot of practicing on us, you know, and, you know, I had to forgive God and people were like, oh, my gosh, you didn't have to forgive God. It wasn't for him. It was for me because there were many of times I was like, why are you doing this to me? What did I do? Is this some sort of punishment for something? You know, and those times where you're screaming and you're shaking your fist at the heavens, I finally had to say, you know what? It's okay. It is all going to be okay. And so that basically is what the book is about. It's all the different ways that you can have forgiveness during this journey because you're going to need it. Your friends are going to say something crazy. Your doctor is going to do something crazy. The school system is going to do something crazy. And the people closest to you, there's going to be times your spouse sometimes will say something crazy because they're frustrated and then they don't know. And so there's a lot of forgiving of other people, and most importantly, yourself. You know, sometimes every single day, the first thing you need to do is forgive yourself for whatever happened the day before. You might have yelled at your kid because you were frustrated. You know, you might have burnt dinner. You might have forgotten that, you know, you were out of pizza and that's all they eat is pizza. And so they had a major meltdown that lasts for hours. And so not only did it impact you, it impact your child with autism and everyone else in the home and probably the neighbors downstairs as well. You know? and so you have to give yourself for those things, you know? And again, even if you don't have someone in your home that's on the autism spectrum, when was the last time that you said, I forgive me? for the things that you've done. So that's wow. what, yeah. Wow, I'm just letting that soak in. Forgive yourself each day. That is so, so powerful. And I think that that's something that we can all take to heart. Um, so if you had to boil it down, what is the one thing that you wish more people knew about, about autism or about parenting a child with autism? or just anything that you've, that you've spoken about? So one of the things that frustrate me about autism is that you go to all these places, you go to all these websites, and they make it seem like autism is the worst thing that could ever happen to your family. They talk about how you have to grieve your child as if they had died. They talk about how you have to fix your child because something is wrong with them, you know? And to be honest, none of that is true. Autism is one of the best 
things that has happened to my family. My son, if you think I'm happy and I'm full of joy, my son is one of the happiest people that I have ever met in my life. He is 100% pure joy. And sometimes I wish I could tap into that. No, it did not start off like that at all. But as we grew together, because we did, he made me who I am. And I'm so thankful for that. So as we grew together and we learned each other, and learned how to communicate and learn how to be in each other's world, things got better in our life. And so I'm here to tell you that autism is not the death of anything. Autism is not the worst thing that can happen for your family. Yeah, some families, it is rough. Some families, yeah, sometimes the best thing that you can do is you know, put your child in some place where they can get better support, you know, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But things do get better. The more that you know, the more that you grow. So this isn't some sort of death sentence to your family. This can be the beginning of something great if you just let it. So that's what I want people to know. Very, very well said and very powerful message yet again. So in your bio, I noticed it says former strong black woman. Why the word former? Can you talk a little bit about what that means? So I was a strong black woman. I had strong black woman syndrome, which means that I don't need nobody. I can do all this by myself. I don't need any help. And that's not a position to where you want to be. We were, especially Black women, we were raised to be so independent so that you don't need anyone but yourself. And so weary of other women, we have a hard time making friends because we don't trust each other, because we're constantly being pitted against one another. And so once I release that title of strong black woman. Once I release the part where I have to do everything on my own, where I can only depend on myself, where I can't trust anyone, where I cannot ask for help in any way, never let them see you sweat, you know, is one of my friends thing. That's what she's always says. Never let anybody see you sweat. <laughs> never let anybody know that you're struggling. Never. All that is BS. And that will kill you. Yeah. That will kill you. You will have stroke. <laughs> you can have a heart attack, ulcers, migraines, high blood pressure, all those things because you're doing so much. And we were not meant to do things by ourselves. The universe has given you people, resources to help you. And so you have to learn to release that. It's scary to ask for help because they're not going to do it like you do. Mm -hmm. But it got done. <laughs> and that's the important thing. Like, you know how you ask your kid to sweep the floor and you look at them and you're like, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. But it got done. And that's one less thing that you have to do. The, that, 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 that thing that you're carrying just got a little lighter because you let that go. And so that's why I say I'm a former strong Black woman, because I collaborate all the time. I have a great team of people that help me in my life and in my business. There is no way I can do all the things that I do by myself. And so I want to encourage all of you to stop being that strong Black woman stereotype and learn to ask for help with discernment. That's important. <laughs> learn to ask for help. Start with something small. Don't start with the biggest thing possible. Start with something small and then learn to listen to your intuition, to that gut feeling 
on whether or not this is someone who needs to be doing this project or need to be in your life. I think that is great advice and I love how you made it actionable. Just start with that small thing, um, learning to trust yourself and you shared so, so much there. So I think that's a good segue into talk about the summit um, because I really want to ask you about how you managed to put together the Behold Be Free Summit. You have so many different healers and experts coming together and it just seems like such a huge job. So I just want to ask you, how did you get started? in putting together a summit and if you can just talk a little bit about your journey and what the summit is about. Absolutely. And so this is my third, fourth, fifth summit. Um, not, not my first rodeo by any means, but this is actually the largest summit that I've done by myself, my own summit. And I remember the first summit that I was ever a participant of, not my own, but a participant of. And it was a pay for play summit. Not that anything's wrong with it, but know what you're paying for. And so they made all these promises about all the money I was going to make and, and everything if I just invested this money into the summit. And so with the cost of the summit, um, I mean, they went all the way out. I had to go to the studio, had to be professionally done, hair, makeup, clothes, all of that. I <laughs> For over two thousand dollars to be a part of this summit, it was probably closer to three thousand dollars to be a part of this. I'm again single mom, two kids, one with autism, and so I really thought that this was going to be the jump start of my career, you know. So I sacrificed, saved up the money, paid it, did my video, all of that, and I made zero dollars in zero cents. I basically, I could have just taken the $3,000 and threw it in the trash because that's what I got from it. Now, did some people make money? Absolutely. They're stars, the celebrity people that were there. They all made money. But when you have like 100 people, I mean, this was huge, 100 people speaking. And if you have these celebrity speakers and then you have me who no one's ever heard of, who's going to watch my video? or even care about what it is I had to say. And so that's when I decided, you know what? I'm gonna create my own platform. I'm going to help people like me. And so my very first one, I did it inside a Facebook group. It was small, I had like five speakers. It was great, it was wonderful. People were like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. I'm like, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. And so this time, I've got the process down the way I wanted it. I have an amazing platform. I have a great assistant. And let me tell you something, you cannot do anything of this magnitude by yourself. So I have over 40 speakers of all different modalities. We're talking about health, wellness, spirituality, business, family, children, sexuality, we touch on everything in this summit. Over, it's six days long, Monday through Saturday. And there is at least, what, five, six speakers every single day. Um, but I couldn't do it without my team. I couldn't do it without my assistant. I couldn't do it without the person doing the graphics. I couldn't do it without the group that I have where I decided, even if this is the first time you've ever spoken before, I was going to hold your hand and give you every single tool that you needed to be successful. If you didn't know what you was going to talk about, I, I, I said, I will make myself available so you can get on a call with me. And everyone was able to, whoever wanted to, was able to get into a call and have a conversation with me where we knocked it out. We talked about what it is that you're going to talk about. We talked about what it is you're going to offer as your freebie or your lead magnet. We talked about what it is you're going to sell if you wanted to sell something. We talked about how to outline your talk if you're going to do that. We talked about creating the mailing list. I provided all of these resources for you, you know, and I don't own the rights to their videos. And so after the summit, 
You can use it as a webinar. You can cut it up and use it as promo pieces. You can create a podcast from it. You can do all these things because it's your property, it's your asset. I want you to succeed no matter what it is you do after we part ways. And if you decide, hey, Tess, I wanna partner with you. I wanna do a summit with you, come on. And we can do the exact same thing for you and your audience. And so this has been a wonderful experience for me. And from the feedback that I've got from the speakers like you, it's been an amazing experience for them as well. Absolutely. And Contessa, you've done such an amazing job. Um, just as the reason why you've been such an inspiration to me is just seeing how much of a resource you were. Pretty much every question I came up with, you already were two steps ahead of me. You had information there for us, downloads, things we could read. You sent, you continue to send us articles and um, really just developing all of the speakers. And so I really appreciate you for your generosity and for your example of leadership. And I really aspire to be able to do what you're doing, to be able to put on my summit in time once I get my stuff together. <laughs> so thank you for being so awesome. Can you know, you, you don't have to get your stuff together. You're together now. Okay. <laughs> I will, I receive that. And so can you tell our listeners where they can actually connect with you, where they can register for the summit? So I can be found all over the place. My name is Contessa Louise. So all over social media at Contessa Louise, you can find me. My website is ContessaLouise.com. And the easiest way to get to the summit is to go to either ContessaLouise.com or to go to ModAltHealth.com, which is the name of my magazine. So M-O-D-A-L-T, um, ModAltHealth.com and go there and get it. But seriously, if you can't find me, just DM me on any of my platforms and I will give you a free ticket to the summit. Again, summit is absolutely free. All that we ask that you do is show up and get you some healing. <laughs> I love it. And be sure to share this with everyone you know, because you never know who in your network needs to hear the information. There's so much of it available at the summit. Um, so before we go, Contessa, I just want to ask for the for the woman out there who has gone through a hard time and, you know, has been kind of forced in the fire. She has all these gifts, talents, these ideas. What are some concrete steps or some maybe a little bit of advice you can give her to get started and being able to either write a book or start her business or just make some type of purposeful action out of her story in her journey? So the first thing that I want you to know is that you are already enough. You will sit there and you will talk yourself out of every single um, situation, every single opportunity that comes up. You know, I had people that I had to approach twice about being in the summit. They saw it and they didn't say yes. And I was in their inbox like, you're going to do this, right? And they're like, well, I don't know. It's like, no, you're going to do this, right? And so when you see those opportunities, say yes. Say yes. I know it's scary. Say yes. And once you say yes, you can figure out how you're going to do it. But say yes to these opportunities nothing is going to change in your life if you keep saying no. So go ahead and say yes and confide in that one person, not everybody, not everybody, but that one person that you know that has your back, confide in them and say, hey, I'm about to do this and allow them to gas you all the way up. Yeah, girl, you got this. You know, you should have been doing this a long time ago. Let me know if you need anything. And if you don't have that person, come and slide in my DM. And I promise you, I will gas you up. You will believe that you can do anything after spending five minutes with me. So the first step is to move, to say yes, to do something. After you do that, then you can figure out how you're going to do it. And most of the time, just do what they say <laughs> and you'll get it done. So my advice always is to move. First of all, you already have what you need. You are enough then to move. 
You can catch this again if you miss anything. It'll be on the podcast for you to hear. You can find that at yes to you podcast.com. Be sure that you register for the summit. It starts Monday, August 12th. It's going to be going all week to August 17th. And be sure to share this out with everyone you know. Make sure you use the hashtag get you some healing. Reach out to Contessa. Reach out to me. You can find me at rohiniwellness.com. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be here with you, Contessa. I really appreciate you for being here. And the last thing I'll say is my motto, which is you get to choose how you show up in life. So love yourself fiercely, own your story, and say yes to your calling.